Well, he was just asking for an all-weather portfolio, not for the mm. billionaire or multimillionaire, but for the regular, yeah. you know, right person right. who makes a regular salary. Yeah. And uh, and he said that it, to your point, 96% of financial advisors who try to time the market underperform the market. Mm -hmm. It's 96% who try to time the market underperform the market. Right. That's a big stat, man. You think it's possible to time the market, Brian? No, it is not possible to time the market. Um, in fact, I've got a probably about a half a dozen. No, it's more than that. I'm sorry. It's a dozen. Excuse me. It's about a dozen portfolios that we watch from some of the big hedge fund managers. I mean, these are people that manage, you know, a uh, hundred billion. I mean, oh, mass, they're big, big money, big, big money. I mean, uh, tens of billion um, down to a couple billion. But these are some of the top in the world, and they get it wrong all the time because they're timing the market. That's part of their game. A hedge fund has these signals. They jump in. They jump out. Right? They, they change uh, stock positions or um, short the market. If you know what shorting is, right, you're betting mm -hmm. against the market. It could be a, the market as a whole, or you could be betting against a particular uh, stock or an ETF, right? A position saying you're saying you're you're betting that it's going to go down right and so what i find out is that they're right until they're wrong and then when they're wrong they're, they're really, really wrong. wrong yeah they're really really wrong and then their rate of return goes down the tubes and then they lose half their clients because they took so much risk right betting against the market or betting against a solid company so I think it's it's um, behooves you as a typical person that may have you know the uh, the few million in the stock market, uh, you know four hundred one k IRAs or brokerage accounts, or even if you have ten or twenty million, it doesn't matter. Um, you still should be buying. It's 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 very much like trying to time real estate. You know, oh, is this a really good time to buy it because it's springtime or summertime, or the kids are going to get back in and I should. You know, it's going to go up and, you know, I think if you buy a really good stock position, meaning position could be one stock or a portfolio with a bunch of good stocks, because even in really bad recessions, there was still stocks and companies that were really doing well. Yeah. They thrive in recessions, right? Um, and so I think it's instead of timing it, try to find a portfolio that is recession resistant and do something that you can do about it. Right. I mean, there, there's ways to make more money. Stop trying to save your way to retirement. I tell you about that book. I read what book you read a book. Mm, yeah, I know. When was I know this? it's hard to believe 25 years ago, uh, but it was high school. It was no, you went to college too. Tony Robbins. And he, he oh. interviewed the top 13 wealthiest people in the, in the world. Yeah. What did he say? Well, it, it, he was just asking for an all weather portfolio, not for the, billionaire or multimillionaire but for the regular yeah. you know right person right. who makes a regular salary yeah. and uh and he said that it, to your point 96% of financial advisors who try to time the market underperform the market mm -hmm. it's 96% who try to time the market underperform the market right that's a big stat man it's huge and i think you know you have to go back to whether you're buying stock or you're buying real estate, or you're buying a business, Does are the fundamentals of this deal, right, or this investment that I'm about to get into, does it make sense, and do I have an exit if it drops 20 or 30%, right? Do I have a pretty good exit to get my principal back? And I think that's what you should kind of be looking at when you're investing in anything, and not having too much of a, what we would call a tranche in one thing. A tranche could be, you know, like we've had people come in and they got five stocks, $3 million in five stocks. And I'm just going, that's great that you grew it this way, but you're crazy. I'm like, well, I want you to manage it. I want you to time it when it's the best time to exit out of here. I'm like, no, <laughs> you're not. I, as soon as I put my name on it and it goes down 50%, then, then I'm held responsible for it, right? And it's going to be out of my control. I mean, and in fact, actually, right after he left, he had Netflix, and Netflix was a good stock, but it had lost. It got murdered. I forget what happened. 
Um, and that would have been on my watch, right? Who would have been to blame? Or you would have. Yeah. Me, they right? Come to you and, first. Right, and it was a taxable account, meaning it was if I you couldn't just sell it because you didn't pay a lot of tax and you look bad on the tax side because we do the taxes for our clients mm-hmm. too. So we get yelled in April, right, when we find, whoa, whoa, wait. Well, it's great. You know, we got out before it got clobbered, but now I owe 100000 yeah, All right. right. No doubt. So anyways, the point is that, you know, I, th- I think you got to get back to, um, you know, the fundamentals of long-term investing and not just long-term investing in the stock market, but long-term investing individually looking at what you're investing in because it's not guaranteed, right? Uh, timing the market is only been done by a few, but it's only been done so many times until they're wrong. Thanks for watching. You want to learn more? Check out these recommended videos on screen.